So I had my students the other day and I gave them my unit circle and I said, here's the unit circle. And a couple of the points on the unit circle that you need to know, you know, is one comma zero, all these common points. And I started going through the points and telling them, well, there's certain points on there when we have like pi over four, pi over three, pi over six, that we already know what those values are by using our special right triangles. And the students were very, very confused. They couldn't remember what their special right triangles were for us to be able to determine the points on the line. So if I'm given a point T, all right, we have our coordinates for certain points, for certain points T on our unit circle, we know what our X and Y coordinates are. And I want to show you how I know my x and y coordinates by using my special triangles. So this is my point T for pi over 4 radians. So that way it means when my theta, the measurement of my theta, my angle in radians is pi over 4. Or in degrees, we might say that is the same thing as 45 degrees. So let's determine why is it that I know what x and y are. Where did that come from? Why am I just going to believe what's in the book? So to do that, what I'm going to look at is our unit circle, remember, is based off of having a radius of 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a radius of 1. And what I want to do is remember x and y tells you how far we moved x over how far we moved on the y. Right? We have an x and a y coordinate. x tells you how far did you move away from the origin on the x-axis. And the y tells you how far you moved away from the y on the y-axis. So I essentially have that. Now, I created a 90 degree angle. And if I said that this is worth 45 degrees, therefore 45 plus 90 equals 135, that means this angle has to be 45 degrees. And one thing we noticed by using our geometry is that these two values are going to be exactly the same. Now, let's say I don't know what x and y are, okay? But I don't want to use x and y because I don't want you to confuse, you know, them too. What I'm going to say is let's say, let's count them A. Well, by knowing 45 degree angles, this is what we call, when you have two angles are exactly the same and you have your 90 degree angle, this is what we call an isosceles triangle. These two angles are exactly, the, or these two sides are equal to each other. So if I want to find the value of A, what I could do is say, what about we use the Pythagorean theorem? which states that a squared, and we don't have a b squared, but your other side would be another a squared, equals 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1. So now, what I can do is I can combine those to 2 a squared equals 1. Divide by 2, a squared equals 1 half. Now I'm going to continue my work over here. If I have a squared equals 1 half, to get rid of that squared, I have to take the square root. Now a equals the square root of 1 half. I can rewrite the square root as the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 2. The square root of 1 is going to equal 1 over the square root of 2. Now I have a radical on the bottom. I have to get rid of that radical, so I'm going to rationalize the denominator. Therefore, 1 times the square root of 2 is going to give me now a equals radical 2 over 2. And what you guys notice is, see how a equals radical 2 over 2? Therefore, that's my length for x, and it's also my length for y. That is why the coordinate point when radians is for t over 4 or for 45 degrees, my two coordinate points are square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2.